Yeah, we're doing uh, text 36, the fifth chapter. And uh, let's see here. I can't believe you got guys got snow. Oh you my god! I'm yeah. tired. Of it. <laughs> I already got enough problems where I'm living. Let alone I want to be putting snow on. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's hurting. It's hurting. <laughs> no yeah. Doubt. So, uh, yeah, Trevor got snowed in. He usually goes to the ninja class with uh, Zanu, his son. But they got a whiteout up there, <laughs> two hours north, Pittsburgh. So it's we're going to read all, uh, literally all day. Oh, wow. <laughs> so we're going to read uh, just the, I'm just going to read the translation and the first paragraph, and then we'll take turns. Um you can read the first pair, the second paragraph, Trevor, and uh, I'm just, this is a little refresher because we went over this last week. And then Alan, you can read this, the third paragraph. <clears throat> okay. Translation. While performing duties according to the order of Sri Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one constantly remembers him, his names and his qualities, purport. An expert devotee of the Lord can mold his life in such a way that while performing all kinds of duties, either for this or the next life, he can constantly remember the Lord's name, fame, qualities, etc. The order of the Lord is distinctly there in the Bhagavad Gita. One should work only for the Lord in all spheres of life. In every sphere of life, the Lord should be situated as the proprietor. According to the Vedic rites, even in the worship of some demigods like Indra, Brahma, Saraswati, and Ganesh, the system is that in all circumstances, the representation of Vishnu must be there as Yageshwar, or the controlling power of such sacrifices. It is recommended that a particular demigod be worshipped for a particular purpose, but still the presence of Vishnu can function uh, proper. Oops. Hold on. He's right to be situated despite the simple pain. Hold on a second. I don't know when uh, when my sometimes my um, bows turns off for some reason, and then and then my uh, my my iTunes starts playing for no reason at all. It's like the ghost in the machine, you know. <laughs> Where are my iTunes? There it is. What are you doing, buddy? I'm doing fast. You are fast. Sorry about this, Goldies. It's okay. Okay, uh, now how do I get rid of this? Okay, can you see the screen now? Can you see the? Yeah, I see. All right. it. So, uh, yeah, keep. Uh, you can read the second paragraph there. Apart from such Vedic duties. Uh, Trevor? Oh, apart from such Vedic duties, even in our ordinary dealings, for example, in our household affairs or in our business or profession, we must consider that the result of all activities must be, be given over to the supreme enjoyer, Lord Krishna. In the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord has declared himself to be the supreme enjoyer of everything as the supreme proprietor of every planet and the supreme friend of all beings except lord krishna lord sri krishna no one else can claim to be the proprietor of everything within his creation 
a pure devotee remembers this constantly and in doing so he repeats the transcendental name fame and qualities of the lord which means that he is constantly in touch with the lord the lord is identical with his name fame etc and therefore to be associated with his name fame etc constantly means actually to associate with the lord you see how the more just... hold on the major okay, go ahead. Uh, the major... i got i got a this is a long paragraph here you want me to read it yeah go ahead the major portion of our monetary income, not less than 50%, but must be spent to carry out the order of the Lord Krishna. Not only should we give the profit of our earning to that cause, but we must also arrange to preach this cult of devotion to others because there is also one of the orders of the Lord. The Lord definitely says that no one is more dear to him than one who is always engaged in the preaching work of the Lord's name and, na and fame over all the fame all over the world. The scientific discoveries in the material world can also be equally engaged in carrying out his orders. He wants the message of the Bhagavad Gita to be preached amongst his devotees. It must not be so done amongst those who have no credit of austerities, charity, education, etc. Therefore, the attempt must go on to convert unwilling men to become his devotees. The Lord Chaitanya has taught a very simple method in this connection. He has taught the lessons for preaching the transcendental message through singing, dancing, and refreshment. As such, 50% of our income may be spent for this purpose in this fallen age of quarrel and dissension. If, uh, if the only the leading and wealthy people of society agree to spend 50% of their income in the service of the Lord, as it is taught by Lord Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahabharu, there is absolute certainty of converting the hell of pandemonium to the transcendental abode of the Lord. No one will disagree to partake in the function where good singing, dancing, and refreshment are administered. Everyone will attend such a function, and everyone is sure to feel individuality the transcendental presence of the Lord. This alone will help the attendant associate with the Lord and thereby purify themselves in spiritual realization. The only condition for successfully executing the spiritual activities is that must be conducted under the guidance of a pure devotee who is completely free from all the mundane desires, fruit of activities, and dry speculations about the nature of the Lord. No one has to discover the nature of the Lord. It is already spoken by the Lord himself in the Bhagavad Gita, especially in and all other Vedic literatures generally. We have simply to accept them in Toto and abide by the order of the Lord. That will guide us to the path of perfection. No one remains in his position. No one has to change his position, especially in this age of variegated difficulties. The only condition is that one must Give up the habit of dry speculation aimed at the at becoming one with the Lord. And after giving up such lofty, puffed-up vanities, one may very submissively receive the orders of the Lord in the Bhagavad Gita or the Bhagavad time from the lips of a bona fide devotee whose qualifications is mentioned above. That will make everything successful without a doubt. Yeah, that's what I always tell people when they, on my Uber riders when I invite them to uh, the Kirtan. I tell them, you know, it's kind of like a drum circle. That's a hippie thing. I ask them if there's, if they know what a drum circle is. And if they say no, I said, well, that's, I'm old. So I know what drum, I know what it's, that's a hippie thing. I know about hippie stuff because I'm old. And then, and then I tell them, then we have a, after a, the drum circle call and response mantra meditation, you know, we, the chanting and then the dancing, you know, like a group of uh, kids or, or, you know, even adults will start uh, playing on the percussion instruments we have in the middle of the room, and then uh, they'll start dancing. And and then after that, we have a free vegetarian feast. So chanting, dancing, and feasting, those are the three aspects of our yoga process. It's not like sitting around and twisting yourself up into a pretzel or something. You know, this is actually fun. It's more fun than they've ever had in Pittsburgh. So um, guaranteed.
So uh, what's not to like, right? I tell them free is good, right? You like free? I tell them free is my favorite price because I don't make that much <laughs> money with Uber. <laughs> so uh, okay, we're going to go on. What's that? Pretty simplified method there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I it's say. perfect. I mean, you know, like you don't need a you don't need an uh, uh, to study so much so many books. All you need to do is chant Hare Krishna. If you can study, if you're interested, you know, it's just it's awesome. Probably yeah. books are the basis of of our philosophy. But um, we're not just a bunch of sentimentalists. We're actually, um, you know, learned in the Vedic scriptures, and we also chant and dance, and we have fun. You know, mm -hmm. one guy actually asked one time, he said, what, you know, they were out distributing books and the guy said, why don't you guys get a job? And I said, what do we need a job for? And, and uh, he said, so, well, then you could, you know, I said, or one, somebody said, and we already have like the best of everything. We have the, like the palace of gold with a marble dance floor and uh, the best food and the best philosophy and the best music and the best people. And, uh, so what do I need a job for? And the guy said, well, if you had a job, then you could put all that in your name. <laughs> they just That's, don't get it. It's just, it's just a, um, it displays the, uh, the fault of the civilization that they think everything is theirs when actually everything belongs to Krishna. And if they did mm -hmm. that, they'd be happy. But if they try to own everything, then they're actually thieves. They're they're trying to steal Krishna's property. Everything belongs to Krishna. Just like it said in that purport there, you know, he, he's the owner of everything. That's Stop the having of fun. Stop having fun. Be a slave like me. <laughs> he, he what? Stop having fun chanting, dancing, and eating good food. Come be yeah, a slave yeah. like me. I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Well, you know, the the nature of uh, devotional service is just nothing but, you know, nothing but happiness. You know, he mm -hmm. uh, reveals himself through his name and and his food. And so, you know, it's, uh, it's very simple. Anybody can do that. Even a dog. Prabhupada said, even a dog can take part in the chanting. Okay, so text 37. Rom namo bhagavate tubyam vasudeva dimihi pradumnaya nirudhaya nama sankar shanayacha synonyms. Om, the sign of chanting the transcendental glory of the Lord. So I got my om hat on. See my om hat? Omkar. That's actually the, the non-different from Krishna himself. He said, I am the syllable Om. Mm -hmm. uh, offering obeisances unto the Lord. Bhagavate, unto the personality of God, Tubiam, unto you, Vasudevaya, unto the Lord, the son of Vasudev. Dimahi, let us chant. Pradumnaya, Anirudaya, and Sankarshanaya. All plenary expansions of Vasudev, Dama, respectful obeisances. Cha, and. Translation, let us all chant the glories of Vasudeva along with his plenary expansions, Pradumna, Niruda, and Sankarshan. Go ahead, uh, Trevor, read the first paragraph. According to Pancharatra, Narayana is the primeval cause of all expansions of Godhead. There are, these are Vasudeva, Sankarshan, uh, Pradyumna, and Aniruda. Vasudeva and Sankarshana are on the middle, left, and right. Pradyumna is on the right of Sankarsana, and Aniruddha is on the left of Vasudeva. And thus the four deities are situated. They are known as the four aides de camp of Lord Sri Krishna. This ahead, is the Alex. Vedic... Oh, whoops. Take turns. You, you read the next one. Alan. This is a Vedic common mantra beginning with the Omkara Pravana pr how do you pronounce it? Pranava. Pranava. And thus the mantra is established of the transcendental chanting process, namely Om Namo Dhamma Exa. The purport is that any transaction, either in the field of fruit of work or in the empiric philosophy, which is not all unlimited, 
ultimately aimed at transcendental realization of the Supreme Lord is considered to be useless. Neurology, neurology has therefore explained the nature of the unalloyed devotional service by the personal experience and the devotion of intimacy between the Lord and the living entity by a gradual process of progressive devotional activity. Such a progressive march of transcendental devotion of for the Lord culminates in the attainment of loving service to the Lord, which is called prima. From different transcendental and variegated, and this is called rasha, which is the tastes. Such devotional service is also executed in mixed forms, namely mixed with fruitive work or empiric philosophical speculation. Go ahead, Trevor. Now the question which was raised by the great Rishis, headed by Shanika, regarding the confidential part of Sutta's achievement through the spiritual masters, explained herein by chanting this hymn consisting of 33 letters, and this mantra is addressed to the four deities of the Lord with his plenary expansions. The central figure is Lord Sri Krishna because the plenary portions are his aides de camp. The most confidential part of the instruction is that one should always chant and remember the glories of the Lord Sri Krishna. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, along with his different plenary portions, expanded as Vasudeva, Sankarshan, Pradyumna, and Aniruddha. These expansions are the original deities for all other truths, namely either Vishnu Tattva or Shakti Tattva. Shakti means energy. <clears throat> Text 38. Iti murti abhidanena mantra murti amurtikam yajanti yagya purusham sa samyag darshana puman. Synonyms. Iti thus murti representation abhidamnena in sound mantra murti form representation of transcendental sound amurtikam the Lord who has no material form jayate worship, yagya, Vishnu, Purusham, the personality of Godhead, Sa, he alone, Samyak, perfectly, Darshana, one who has seen, Puman, person, translation. Thus, he is the actual seer who worships in the form of transcendental sound rep representation, the supreme personality of Godhead, Vishnu, who has no material form. Go ahead, uh, Alan. The poor part is our present. Our present senses are all made of material elements, and therefore they are all imperfect in realizing the transcendental form of Lord Vishnu. He is therefore worshipped by sound representations through the transcendental method of chanting. Anything which is beyond the scope of experience by our imperfect senses can be realized fully by the sound representation. A person transmitting sound from a far distant place can be factually experienced. If this is materially possible, why not spiritually? This experience is not a vague personal, impersonal experience. It is actually an experience of the transcendental personality of Godhead who possesses the pure form of eternity, bliss, and knowledge. Yep. It's like, you know, it's like television, transcendental television. I used to think when I first... Uh, saw the deities in New Vrindavan, I was thinking, when I'm seeing the deities, I'm actually seeing everything in the world. Because everything's like situated in one place, you know. Mm -hmm. I'll go ahead. Cool. Uh, try. Uh, therefore, Amartikam is explained by Acharya Sri Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur as meaning without difficulty. The transcendental form of eternal bliss and knowledge can be experienced by our original spiritual senses, which can be revived by chanting of the holy mantras or transcendental sound representations. Such sound should be received from the tran transparent agency of the bona fide spiritual master, and the chanting may be practiced by the direction of the spiritual master. That will gradually lead us nearer to the Lord. This method of worship is recommended in the Pancharatrika system, which is both recognized and authorized. The Pancharatrika system has the most authorized codes for transcendental devotional service. Without the help of such codes, one cannot approach the Lord, certainly not by dry, dry philosophical speculation. Uh, the Pancharatrika system is both practical and suitable for this age of quarrel. 
the Pancharatra is more important than the Vedanta for this modern age. Yeah, those are uh, Pancharatrikas is uh, made by Narada Muni, I believe. <clears throat> There's a verse that says that if unless you they're authorized forms by the Pancharatrika um, scriptures, if anything is uh, doesn't agree with that system, then it's just a disturbance in society. Text 39. Imam Swa Nighamam Brahman Avetya Mad Anushtitam Adan Me Ganam Aishvaryam Swani Swasmin Bhavam Chakeshava. Synonyms Imam, thus Swa Nigamam, confidential knowledge of the Vedas in respect to the Supreme Personality of God at Brahman, O Brahmana, Vyasadev, Avetya, knowing it well, Mat by me. Anustitam executed adat bestowed upon me may me ganam transcendental knowledge aishvaryam opulence swashmin personal bhavam intimate affection and love cha and keshva lord krishna translation o brahmana thus by the supreme lord krishna i was endowed first with the transcendental knowledge of the lord as inculcated in the confidential part of the vedas then with the spiritual opulences and then with his intimate loving service go ahead al the poor <clears throat> the poor part is the community with the lord by transmission of the transcendental sound is not different from the whole spirit lord shri krishna it is a complete, perfect method for approaching the Lord by such pure contact with the Lord without offense of material conceptions of numbering 10. The devotee can ra rise above the material plane to understand the inner meaning of the Vedic literatures, including the Lord's existence in the transcendental realm. The Lord reveals his identity gradually to one who has unflinching faith, both in the spiritual master and in the Lord. After this, the devotee is endowed with the mystic opulences, which are eight in number. And above all, the devotee is accepted in the confidential entourage of the Lord and is entrusted with specific service of the Lord through the agency of the spiritual master. A pure devotee is more interested in serving the Lord than in showing an exhibition of the mystic powers dormant in him. Srinarda has explained all these from his personal experience, and no, and one can obtain all the facilities which Sri Narda obtained by perfecting the chanting process of the sound representation of the Lord. There is no bar for, for chanting this transcendental sound by anyone, provided it is received through Narda's representat representative coming down from the chain of the Siplic succession or the... Uh, Pomparava system. Text 40. Tvam api abhadra shrutam bishrutam bibo samapieta yena vidam babhutsitam prakyahi dukar mohur aditatmanam sanklesha nirvanam usanti nanyata. Synonyms. Tvam, your good soul, Api also, Bhadra, vast, Shruta, Vedic literatures, Vishrutam, have heard also, Vibho, of the Almighty, Samapyate, satisfied, Yena, by which Vidam, of the learned, Vibhutsitam, who always desire to learn transcendental knowledge, Prakyahi, describe Dukhai, by miseries, who always are dita atmanam, suffering mass of people, shanklesha, sufferings, nirvanam, mitigation, osantina, do not get out of, anyata, by other means. Translation, please, therefore, describe the almighty Lord's activities which you have learned by your vast knowledge of the Vedas, for that will satisfy the hankerings of great learned men and at the same time mitigate the miseries of the masses of common people who are always suffering from material pangs. Indeed, 
There is no other way to get out of such miseries. Go ahead, Trevor. Sri Narada Muni from Practical Experience definitely asserts that the prime solution of all problems of material work is to broadcast very widely the transcendental glories of the Supreme Lord. There are four classes of good men and there are four classes of bad men also. The four classes of good men acknowledge the authority of the Almighty God and therefore such good men, one, they are in difficulty, two, when they are in need of money, three, when they are advanced in knowledge, and four, when they are inquisitive to know more and more about God intuitively uh, take shelter of the Lord. As such, Narada G advises Vyasadeva to broadcast the transcendental knowledge of God in terms of the vast Vedic knowledge, which he had already attained. Go ahead, Al. Sri Narada <clears throat> advised Vyasadeva. Oh, wait, no, you're, uh, you've skipped one. It's as far as the bad men uh, are oh, as far as the bad as yeah as far as the bad men are concerned they are four number one those who are simply addicted to the modes of progressive fruit of work and thus are subjected to the accompanying miseries two those who are simply addicted to the vicious work for sense gratification sense uh, sense satisfaction and so suffer the consequence three those who are materially very much advanced in knowledge but who suffers because they do not have the sense of acknowledgement, the authority of the Almighty Lord, and for the class of men who are known as atheists and who therefore purposely hate the very name of the God, very name of God, although they are always in difficulty. You can read uh, the last par paragraph too, um, Trevor. Okay. Sri Narada G advised Vyasudeva to describe the glories of the Lord just to do good to all the eight classes of men, both good and bad. Sri Bhagavatam is therefore not meant for any particular class of men or sect. It is for the sincere soul who wants actually his own welfare and peace of mind. Okay, we're done. Now we got 10 minutes left. I guess we can start the next chapter, but um, <clears throat> anybody, ha you have any questions about this uh, particular? Uh, I section? have one. I have one. What does Prabhupada on his writing his scripture mean? Because this was also in teachings of Lord Chaitanya, but what he means by a cult, because cults are usually like Scientology where you invented it or sex like sects sects like the isis or the taliban or the al-qaeda where they're still believing god but they're doing things that are kind of deranged so what yeah, does it I, kind of I mean by cult so what does it mean oh, by see, what you know you know what the root word of cult the, the word of the culture comes from cult cult comes from the word culture and yeah for since before you know that it was given a bad name by people in america the cult of Lord Chaitanya has always been known as the cult of Lord Chaitanya. It's a culture of knowledge. Cult, like the dictionary definition of cult. I'll just look it up here for your, uh, for your. Uh, knowledge here. That's a, that's a good thing about. For cultivation. Cult, cult, cultivation or culture. It's the it? same root etymol etymological meaning. It's not a bad word. It's just been made bad by people who think, okay, you lump all the cults together. Cults like Jim Jones, you know, where they all took the, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, Jim Kool Aid or whatever they said. That was pretty bad. Yeah, that was Jim Jones is the worst, or Ron Ron L Hubbard. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's so many intelligent people, the movie stars like Tom Cruise. They're good movie stars, too, you know, Tom Cruise yeah. and uh, and um, what's his name? Uh, Will Smith. Is he, no, he's not. He's not in. A, he's actually Hare Krishna. Uh, yeah. But uh, the, the guy, uh, Vinnie Barbarino, you know. Oh, yeah. Vinnie Barbarino. He, yeah, I can't Beyonce, remember. Jay Z. See, look, cult, <laughs> uh, a particular system of religious worship, especially with reference to its rites and ceremonies. 
That's a cult. That's a dictionary definition. It's just been given a bad name by everybody else. You know, like, you know, give a dog a, give a dog a bad name and hang it. You know. Yeah. Kind of what proper pause speaking of basically is cultivating consciousness as a community. Prabhupada says that. That's basically what he means by it. So cultivating consciousness as a community community. Cult cult. Yeah, short the Krishna culture, consciousness is, is basically consciousness of Krishna. That's the mm -hmm. whole sum and substance of this movement. If you're conscious of Krishna and if you develop um attraction for his to be to his personality by listening to his pastimes, the riches you know, only available through the medium of spiritual master, through the Vedas, and, you know, that that's passed down through disciplic succession, then you can, if you're attracted to that um, culture of knowledge, then you, you become conscious of Krishna, and you want more and more. That's the nature of love. When you, when you have something, you're delighted when you get it, and you want more of it. So that is I'm just reading this book now by my spiritual master called How to Love God. It's really an awesome book too. But um, the nature of love is that uh, Krishna teaches you uh, how to love him. He empowers you to love not only him, but everybody else too. So it's, uh, it, it, he's a whole package, you know. There's nobody else that could that could be like him. Even his lovers, you know, like Rukmini, his wife in Dwarka. You know, one time Krishna started teasing her and she, he said, you could have had anybody, you know, but you picked me. I don't even have any kind of fixed resonance. Nobody knows what my cast is. You know, I'm just, you know, I, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, he could have packed all these other princes who were much more qualified than I was. He, he wanted to make her angry. So he could like see her angry face because she was just such a chaste wife. And but uh, she took it the wrong way and she thought that he was going to leave her. And uh, so she actually was fanning him with her yak tail whisk, you know, in his in her palace. And she became faint and fainted on the ground and uh, <laughs> like a banana tree cut down by a whirlwind, it says in the Bhagavatam. <laughs> And so, you know, Krishna, he he could understand that he had, you know, she had mistaken his, you know, took it seriously. And uh, so he manifests four arms and he picked her up with the four arms yeah. and of, of Vishnu, you know, because he had to like, you know, wipe her face and, you know, like and pick her up at the same time. But, you know, it's like, it's really a sweet pastime, you know, the, the Krishna teases Rukmini. And, uh, but even she, you know, she said, you know, like after he, she rebutted everything that Krishna said, you know, said, who would want like an ordinary man, you know, men, you know, according to her, your, your body is transcendental, but a men, ordinary men, they're just full of pus, stool, urine, bad smells, mustaches, you know, and, and that's the material body of an ordinary man. Whereas, you know, Krishna's body is like, the, it, you know, the Lord Rishabdev, you ever heard of him? Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, you've heard of him, Alan, because you asked yeah, me questions about him once. Even his stool, you know, they always say, like, this guy thinks his shit don't stink, you know. But <laughs> even Lord Rishabdev, when he passed stool, so the aroma hard. of the stool would spread over 50 miles away and it would smell like roses. Mm -hmm. So, you know, <laughs> anybody that thinks, you know, you know, God is the only one that can do that, you know, but everybody else is like full of bad smells and, and gross things. And if you're there, you, you uh, took off one layer of skin, all kinds of vermin and, and bugs would start attacking it. You know, it's just like everything about the material body is gross. And so, uh, but Krishna's body is totally different, you know, uh, he's transcendental and any part of his body can do any other part of his body, do whatever, you know, he can see with his ears, 
he can taste with his legs, you know, he can do anything with any part of his body because he's absolute. So, you know, Rukmini was saying, why should I want like an ordinary man, you know, yeah. when I have you? <laughs> Which makes perfect sense. Right. We got about two minutes left. I'm not going to go to the next chapter because you want to talk about anything in particular? Or, um... Yeah, that, that story was in the Krishna book with Rukmini. Yeah, yeah, that that's a, a very it's good a story. beautiful. It's actually chapter 60 something, I think. Pastimes of Krishna and Rukmini. I love those those pastimes, especially when Krishna steals her from the, the temple. You know, mm -hmm. she didn't want to get married to Shishapal because he was totally envious of, you know, his her brother was envious of Krishna and Rukmi. And he didn't want he wanted her to marry Shishapal because that was his friend. And because they had arranged marriages back then. And so he didn't want she didn't want to marry him. That would be. And so he she wrote him a letter just before the marriage and said, you got to come and kidnap me, because that was one of the methods <laughs> of marriage. If you somebody kidnaps a woman and touches them, it's just as good as married. Nobody else can have her in Vedic culture. So that was a, it's called a Rakshasha marriage. And so he yeah. said, I know I can do it, too. So nobody will get killed, you know, because if he would have invaded the palace, he would have had to kill like all her her friends and relatives and stuff and he she didn't want that he didn't want it either but he says but she said right before the marriage they'll be like you you have an opportunity but anyway i got less than a minute left thank you much for um joining us and uh we'll talk next week hopefully all righty have a good one all right thank, Bo, you. thank you all right Bo. all right Bo.